Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Excuse me, everyone. <laughs> I actually need the questions up. Hello, everybody. How are we today? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for asking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad, babe. This is our question, question and answers little video. It's going to be a part two video that's going to be more uh, questions about effing clothing and and um, that side of things. And business things. And business. So we're just going to chop them up. You've got a lot of questions. So this is um, part one. First of all, the fit check. What are you wearing, baby? Oh, I am wearing my favourite long sleeve on the market today. Let me just give you a twirl. It's created. So this is a 350 um, GSM. Wait a second. What is GSM, babe? GSM is grams per square metre. So, so your your typical average everyday T-shirt is probably 160 to 200 and. 20 GSM on the higher end. So if you know what a pro club t-shirt is, that's 220. This is 350, so it's very, very heavy weight, mm. and it is it is of the best quality. What I'm wearing today is uh, one of my latest releases. It's a 280 GSM essential t-shirt. It's in the color black, vintage black, and it's probably one of my favorite t-shirts at the moment. Not being biased, but I just really love it. And the thickness and the weight of it is just, mwah. I feel like it goes with everything, you know? Like you wear it up and down, you know? You can, like... yeah, I'm wearing it with these pants. These pants that I thrifted for $8. They're my, well, my favorite pants. Women's, from the women's section, you know? So yeah, women's section, never sleep on the women's section when you go to the thrift store. Just a basic necklace that I made a uh, hat by um, Basket Case Gallery Trucker Yeah, old simple trucker and um, barefoot because you know we natural that's our fit check for this video and um, let's crack into some of the questions it's going to be more of like a podcasty type yeah. you know interviewee I actually all... don't also know the answer to some of these questions so I'm actually very excited to ask but these are questions that people ask on Instagram and I added my own too Oh, okay. This is actually a really nice one. So, how has being Moldy helped your journey as a creator? I think that um, being a Kiwi in general is like it's a bonus at, at anyone's you know journey. You know? And being being Moldy is just I don't know the icing or the cherry on top, and it's I don't know it's contributed contributed to my great looks. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, I'm not complaining, but um, I love my culture. And I think it definitely moulded me into who I am today. Why do Modi Hall, my, my personal brand, is Moldy, and it means spiritual awakening. And Moldy, so yeah. I love it, that's cool. Oh, this is a good one. Helpful routines and habits that you do. Hmm. <laughs> Some would say I'm not even the best person to ask about, you know, helpful routines and habits, because mm. I tend to fall off, you know, routine and habits and or I'll, I'll have an, a nice routine going for a couple of days and one day one day and then I'll just kind of crash and burn and <gasps> go down but lucky I have you know no yeah I'm actually quite good she's kind of instilled oh, she's oh, yeah. instilled some some good habits and routines into our daily daily life like our first one is you know get up and walk the dog take that a shock sales me well, yeah. Yeah. You know, we go get our coffee <laughs> in the morning yeah. and we don't talk about work first thing in the morning and and go, no phones, like no as no as you phones, up. you know, no phones when you wake up because, you know, your phone just feeds you all of the shit, all yeah. of this entertainment kind of, mm. and it it's and it just negative. and like, opens yeah. like what what our our thing is like it opens all these tabs inside your head mm. and you can't focus on one thing because you know, but yeah, habits and routines. I think the first one is just you know get up, do something for yourself in the morning, and then kind of crack into work. And the the book that we've been reading um, currently or well, lately is. Success, success Habits by uh, Napoleon Hill and after you know you, you read one page and then you can just kind of divulge and talk about that for you know a couple of minutes it's really good <laughs> do you have any routines in business ways like when you're designing and that like do you have to be in a certain yeah. environment or a zone or, you know what I mean yeah so so when I was like kind of um, really like on my design shit like designing all the time 
it had to be late at night I couldn't really get into a nice workflow during the day because everyone will be just doing their own thing but it was just too much hustle and bustle for for me to kind of get into a flow state so I'd stay till you know after hours or I'd come in in the afternoon and I'd work till three four in the morning and then sometimes I'd just crash on, the, on my couch that I had there just because you know 2 a.m was like a sweet spot for me for just powering out um, designs and it was good to just you know that stillness of being by myself and yeah that, that was a really nice routine for me and I think a lot of people in the creative kind of sector can relate to the late night flow because I talk about it a lot uh, a lot to other people who design and create and all of that what about in terms of like now we, we kind of don't like working late just because we are, we, we've got an early schedule and you know our dog wakes us up early if yeah. We can't really sleep in as much, but um. But you like to like I'll walk away. And you like it when I'm not there because I like. Yeah, like say she. she yeah, like say time. she yeah. she asks like a, a question or something after a few minutes. It's like I. Five minutes after that, I, it's, I can't. You know. That's the thing that I understand it. I do. Yeah. Um, who is your fashion inspiration? I'm um. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm not the type of person that kind of idolizes um, people that's so much, so recent. I, I like to take inspiration from from many things: small brand here, big brand here. Mm. This uh, time era, seventies, eighties, or nineties. It mostly would be the nineties. I'm 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 a I'm a real nostalgia type guy, and eighties, nineties is kind of where I. I like to lay it. I feel like a lot of your outfits, you're quite inspired by like one piece of clothing, like the colours and the, the fit and design of it. I feel like you always, you know, some you'll mm. find like a different top and then. Mm. Sometimes I like to create a theme. Like so, yeah. if I'm if I'm gonna go to the beach or something, I will wear like a you know like a workers checkered shirt, and it's like, well, if I'm gonna wear this, you know, I want to kind of look like I'm a old school fisherman today. So I'll chuck on like a vest and like an old kind of crusty hat that's kind of bent in a weird way and I, I kind of want to take on the form of that character at that point in time I love that yeah. I love that because again you, and you look every day and yeah. you change your hair and then like if I want to take a photo like I, I want to be that character that looks like it's straight out the out the 90s or whatever then I that's why I love film so much just because mm. I can emulate the exact the exact way that that photo was emulate emulate yeah what does that mean is it like I copy e you know or, I like that word yeah it's a nice word so yeah so fashion, I, fashion inspiration is is more like think? eras 80s yeah. 90s any anyone or anything from those eras and yourself I feel like you're inspired by your own looks yeah <laughs> yeah I've taken like like for this for example I found the set like the Salvation Army I didn't know that I was in, into this before I found it but I tried it on and it's like well how can I make this look cool and obviously it's a woman's piece but how can I make it look good on a, on a man and it's like well I'll just wear my basic t-shirt and then this is like look how they can get really wide you know what I mean it's so comfortable <laughs> I feel like with what you wear though you have really good confidence like, because you know how some people just mm, that's, you're just you just put on women's pants not that they're women's pants you just literally like mm. I'm gonna put these on yeah and I look good. And then well, I was like, I think, we do. <laughs> yeah, I think the whole thing is like, I don't really care about the stigma. Like, obviously I wouldn't probably be comfortable enough to go out and wear a bra. <laughs> or like a, or a, like a, or a little tiny. <laughs> a little cropped up? A little tiny crop, cropped. But I, I've actually been experimenting. Yeah, like I've, I've actually. done slight crops to my tops lately and maybe shown a little bit of skin. And that's something that I know not, not a lot of people would do, but like it looks good. staunch dudes back in the nineties, you know, would do that and they'd do it with confidence. So it's like, why not? You know? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, pause. I'm just going to go check on the potatoes in the oven. <laughs> One moment, please. It's going good, baby. Yeah. Do you like me just like yeah. kind of, because I was like, you know, a bit more, I don't want it to seem like I've interviewed you. <laughs> You didn't push pause there. Well, no, I didn't. No. That's alright. Hey, well, Shaf's decided to join us now. Hey, my boy. Um, sorry, my broccoli's cooking in the background. Do I just move that up? And turn it off? I did turn it off, I believed. 
but I might have not have. Away. No, up. Yeah. That's exactly what I say. Okay, so what do you do to keep your mental health in tip top shape? Mm. I I was lucky enough to be brought up in an environment that was, you know, full of love and support. I think it kind of paying in dividends today because I don't seem to be the type and I think you're the same as we yeah, talked about it. I don't sure. I don't seem to be the type that's susceptible to, you know um, you know, the feelings and the stresses of other people my mental health is pretty good, but I'm only human and we're we're both only human. And I think like especially of my my mum and I'm pretty sure of your mum too, is they know when something's off, you know. <laughs> Even if I'm shock, 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 shock. One day, just to make a story out of it, one day I came home and just before I got home, I, I fell asleep at the wheel and I kind of went off the road a little bit. Shocks. Shocks. I kind of went off the road a little bit and. I woke up and I was literally driving through this long grass and about 100 metres in front of me was like a big barrier and if I went head on to it going 80, 80 kilometres probably would have been you know, a different story to me getting out of it unscathed and um, I got home and I was just blank faced or whatever I must have had a certain look on my, on my face because my mum just knew straight away that something was up and you know, I was like, oh, nothing, nothing, you know, but bit, a bit, bit, bit embarrassed to kind of admit my, my wrongdoing. And then I'm, I was just sitting there and she just kind of pulled it out of me and I just burst into tears saying what happened and she was real comforting about it. And that's the type of environment that's kind of like moulded me. So, yeah, lucky enough. To... <laughs> yeah, so lucky enough to... Um, lucky in that sense that um, my subconsciousness takes care of my my, um, my mental health and I kind of just got to deal with what I need to you know, get done. Bad um, problem of kind of staying awake at the wheel. But um, Yeah, well you'd work till like what, like 4 a.m.? Yeah, but in this, this instance I was new to Australia and oh, wow, it was okay. like very, very warm, not used to the heat. You wind down the window and it's like does no difference it just blows hot hot air at you had no radio had no air con and i was just like that's just like the environment's just knock out yeah has um social media ever affected your mental health or like view of yourself as yeah, a person actually, especially as like a um as a business you know like you'd always compare and look as well <laughs> yeah i think this probably affects anyone like anyone in gen z is that kind of putting social media in front of you you always have something to compare yourself against mm. so like just and I, I'm reaping the benefits of this exact thing is that I jump well you know I, I made decisions to just spend a lot less time on social media lately unless it's something to do with work and it's just paying dividends just like for example if you see a, 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 an event that's happening in, in America like there's there's barely any any way that that's going to affect us here in Australia or in New Zealand, mm. but we kind of let it affect us by having it in front of us when it could have literally been a nothing and it just just that like negative yeah. energy and like ne- seeing the bad things that mm. are going on in the world, which yeah. obviously are important and people should know about. And it's them, always the bad things yeah. that everyone's sharing. It's not it's not no, always the good yeah, things. That's right. They need so the good you, news. Yeah, you, you just take it's taking up all that real estate in your head. Social media is like one of those big things where it's like the less of it you have and the less you consume, the more you time or the more you can worry about yourself and what's in front of you. Oh, so this one is a nice uplifting one. What um, are some of your personal goals outside of business, yeah. just as a person? So, or well, like Which are business one that I want to kind of say is like if you if you watch my few videos that I have, I, I had I had a I explained how I set a goal of being worth a million, or having a one million dollar net worth by um, 2023. It would 
just be it would just come like you know like I wouldn't really have to work hard for it anymore because of what I'd done in that one year when it was, it was a five year goal so I was like this goal like it, it's not exciting me anymore and it's not like scary to look at because it's like yeah like those numbers like they seem quite achievable so it's like what can I do now to get back into that state where I'm like nah I need something to um, make me scared you know and, if I, and, and, and be crazy so I, I, I pushed the goal up to 5 million and yeah it, 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 it's, it's crazy it is a crazy goal and I'm, everyone should have a crazy goal so that's my yeah, that's sure. my crazy goal I like that. I do know you have like really cool business goals, but I guess we'll discuss it yeah. in the next video. Eh? Mm -hmm. Cause they're quite, um, this one's kind of ticking over. Yeah. Oh, all right. But hey, I love it. I'm really having fun. Thank you, baby, for creating this environment. You're welcome. Well, I did a good job, didn't I? I yeah. mean, my plants. This is our sanctuary. It's sanctuary. really nice. All right. Well, I've still got a few questions. Um, oh, okay. This was actually, so a few people asked this question on Instagram. Do you have any insecurities and how do you deal with them? Ooh. Like I'm, I'm only human, you know. I have my fair share of insecurities. Probably. I mean, like, uh, my my moments of insecurities just come in small waves. Like, you know, I know people who that battle with insecurities and 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 all the things that come with it. You know, like anxiety and all of that. I tend to look at, you know, what what do I have that other people don't have the luxury of having you know yeah. and when I weigh it, weigh it up I'm probably you know doing a lot better than some people and that's one thing that helps me with any insecurities that I come across and I was born healthy and I think that's something that a lot of people take for granted oh, for sure yeah um, what advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneurs and creatives mm, I do remember this one as well so, um, the thing is about like a lot of people that come to me for advice is these people are like 16, 17, 18, yeah. 19. Like you're in a position, like the best position of your life where you can make all the mistakes. And you'll hear anyone say this about business. You can make all the mistakes because at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're likely not having to feed um, kids and, you know, and a family. So like you don't have all the responsibilities that stop people in their like mid to late 30s um, from doing what they want to yeah. do and chasing their dreams and falling into that whole like comfortability thing where they got a stable job it's not something that they want to be doing but it's it's taking it's care of the bills family, and it's yeah. fe feeding the family yeah. so it's like if you truly want to do something that uh, or follow a path that you you have passion and the best time to attack it is in your early your younger you know yeah. your younger age make the mistakes I've been 10 different I've gone down 10 different career paths. Yeah. Like, and it's fine. Yeah, like... Because I'm like, uh, I got nothing to lose. Kids. Start of 2017, I was adamant that I wanted to be a tattoo artist. And I was mm. I was positive. I was like, I'm going to be a tattoo artist. Like, I love drawing. I'm, I've been doing tamoko drawings for years. I'm very good at it. Like, I have an eye for, for the art. I can see that my skills, if nurtured, could be really great. But then I... Um, changed my view on it when I realized that you know to be a tattoo artist you have to be the one tattooing every every client you know what I mean and it's like you can only go grow as as far as you know your hand can take you whereas what I'm doing now is something that if you put in some work and you can plant a tree and watch it grow and yeah yeah then pick the fruit Yummy. as you need it I love and plant another tree I like and that. And that's, that's what I want to do for now. But yeah, if you're young, just go with it. Like, there's all the information's out there. Yeah. Uh, anything that you ever want to learn is on YouTube, TikTok. Um, TikTok. TikTok. If you can scroll through, scroll through all the, the bullshit, you'll eventually get an informational video. Mm. Um, that's good. Yeah. That's cool, babe. Just hit it. Go hard. Make the mistakes. Lose the money. Make the money. Lose it again. One day. Make connections. No. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That's really all we have time for today. <laughs> do we do a couple questions? This one or this one? Or we'll do one. one. Just to kind of 
We'll do one. Segway us into the next video. Yeah. Are you planning on having kids soon? I mean, are kids ever playing these days? <laughs> I mean, we I, already have I one. wasn't. We already have one. We have the sh shocks. Yeah, we got Shocky Boy. I think that's enough for us. I yeah. Know. I want a pet cow one day. That's yeah. like my goal. I said I'll, I'll have a kid when I'm a millionaire. So maybe this year. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm lucky. Okay. No. <laughs> Well, I'm not having one this year, so... Only about a million to go. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, babe. Easy, dub. You never know. Uh, shocks to have a kid. Yeah, we... Oh, we want a baby shock. It would be, it'd be a discredit to the world if shocks didn't no, spread his gene, or spread his seed. Spread his seed. <laughs> because he's perfect. just... Oh, he's so perfect. He literally is the best dog. It, he's a stud. Okay. That's enough for now. That's Thank enough. you very much. <laughs> Make sure you share our video because I know that this this information is probably <laughs> beneficial to someone, uh, you know. And if you're watching this, I know you probably can take a lot from it. Um, it's a classic. Mwah. Peace.